As you started diving deeper into shaders, I was looking for more creative ideas. And while scrolling through Twitter, I stumbled upon this captivating concept by Quarantine, which he mentioned was built using WebGL and GSAP. But while I was looking at it, I realized I could recreate this animation without WebGL. So I challenged myself to rebuild the same animation using it as a landing page with nothing but GSAP flip. And I'm happy to say it worked just with HTML, CSS, some basic JavaScript, and GSAP flip. This goes to show that you don't always need complex libraries to create such web experiences. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like and if you are new here, consider subscribing. If you are interested in accessing the source code, check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the video. Let's start by setting up the container for our layout. First, we'll add a navbar. We'll split the nav into two main columns. Each of these columns will be further divided into two sections, which we'll call nav items. Since the navigation isn't our main focus for this video, I'll keep it simple by adding a few items in each section using paragraph tags. To prepare for animations later, we'll wrap each paragraph inside the div. This will allow us to apply a clip path to create a smooth reveal effect. Next, we'll add a loader. For this, I'll include a single paragraph element. Finally, we'll add a gallery section where we'll dynamically render images using JavaScript. And that's all for the HTML. Now let's move on to the styling. First, I'll reset the margin and padding for all elements and set the box sizing to border box. Next, we'll make sure the HTML and body elements take up the full viewport and apply our chosen font. We'll also set the background color to a light shade of gray and keep the text color as black. For the text, we'll set the font size to 13 pixels for a clean minimal look. We'll also ensure that images cover their containers perfectly by setting object fit to cover. Now for the container, it's positioned relative to hold our content. It spans the full width and height of the viewport and will hide any overflow to keep the layout clean. Moving on to the nav, it's fixed at the top, stretches across the full width and has a bit of padding for spacing. The items inside will be displayed in a flex box with some gap between them. Each column within the nav will also be displayed as a flex box with the first column taking up more space than the second. For the nav items, they are evenly distributed within each column. The nav item divs are given a clip path with a basic polygon shape which will help us create the reveal animation later on. They also have a set height and some margin at the bottom for spacing. The item class which will be used for images in our gallery is positioned absolutely with the fixed width and height and a simple background color of grey for now. For the loader, it's also positioned absolutely centered near the bottom of the screen with a text align center and a clip path similar to our nav item. Finally, both the loader text and nav item text are positioned relative inside their containers with an initial transform to move them slightly downwards, setting us up for the animation. With this styling in place, we are ready to move on to the JavaScript. First, we wait for the entire document to load using DOM content loaded. This ensures that our script runs only after the HTML is fully passed and all elements are available. Next, we register the customize plugin from GSAP. This allows us to create customizing functions for smoother and more complex animations. Here I'm creating a customize named hop with a unique curve. We then define some constraints. The items count is set to 30, meaning we'll create 30 image items for our gallery. We also select the container and gallery elements from the DOM which will hold our items. Additionally, we define a boolean variable, a circular layout to keep track of the current layout state. 
Now we define a function called create items. This function dynamically creates our gallery items. We loop through the items count, creating a div for each item with the class item. Inside this div, we add an image element, setting its source attribute to point to an image file and giving it an alt text. Finally, we append each created item to the gallery so they are ready to be animated. Now let's set up the initial layout for our gallery with the set initial linear layout function. First, we select all the item elements we just created. Then we calculate the total width that these items will occupy in the linear layout. We do this by taking the width of each item, adding 10 pixels of spacing between them and subtracting one from the total count to account for the gaps between each items. Next. We determine the starting position which centers the entire set of items within the container by calculating the available space on the left. Inside the for each loop, we position each item horizontally by setting its left value based on its index. Next, we place them off screen below the viewport by setting top to 150% and we keep the rotation at 0 degrees. Finally, we animate the items into their linear positions. Using two function, we bring the items up to 50% of the viewport height and center them vertically with a translate Y minus 50% transform. We also apply the custom hop ease for a smoother entrance and stagger the animation with a slight delay between each item, creating a cascading effect. Next, we'll handle the loader animation and introduce a dynamic fake counter. We start by animating the loader text. Using the two function, we move the loader paragraph into view from below by setting Y to zero. We also introduce a 1 second delay to give the layout some breathing room before the loader appears. Once this animation completes, we trigger the animate counter function. This function manages the countdown you see in the loader. First, we grab the loader paragraph element and set up our initial values. Current value starts at 0, representing the counter's starting point. We set the update interval to 300 milliseconds, meaning the counter will update every 300 milliseconds. The max duration is 2 seconds, which is the total time the counter will run. Finally, we set the end value to 100, which is the target value for the counter. The update counter function handles the actual counting. It calculates the elapsed time and updates the current value by adding a random number between 5 and 30 to keep the count visually dynamic. The counter element's text content is then updated with the current value. If the elapsed time is less than max duration, the counter continues to update. Once the counter reaches the end of 2 seconds, we set the text to the final value of 100. After the counter finishes, we animate it out of the view by moving it upward with GSAP. Once the counter is out of view, we trigger the transition right away to the circular layout by calling animate to circular layout function. Additionally, after a brief delay, we animate the navigation items into the view using a staggered effect. This final touch brings all elements together as the circular layout animation begins. Now let's set up the circular layout function for our gallery items. We start by selecting all the item elements that will be arranged in a circular formation. The first thing we need to do is to calculate the angle increment, which determines the spacing between each item along the circle while ensuring that the items are evenly spaced around the circle. Next, we define the radius of the circle as 200 pixels, which controls how far the items will be positioned from the center of the container. We also calculate center X and center Y coordinates which represent the center point of the circle. These are derived by dividing the container's width and height by 2. 
Then for each item we calculate its position along the circle. The x and y coordinates are determined by the item's angle along the circle using trigonometric functions cos and sin to place each item at the correct point on the circumference. We subtract half the item's width and height from these coordinates to ensure the items are centered correctly. Finally, we use the seps set function to position each item at its calculated left and top coordinates. We also rotate each item so that it faces outward by calculating the appropriate rotation angle based on its position on the circle. This function prepares our items for the smooth transition into the circular layout, creating a visually appealing arrangement that draws the viewer's attention. Now let's bring everything together with the animate to circular layout function. We start by selecting all the item elements once again. Then we use the set flip to capture the current state of these items before we change their layout. The get state method stores the positions, rotations and other properties of each item in its current linear layout. Next, we call the set circular layout function which positions the items into their new circular formation. Using from method, we animate the items from their original linear position to the new circular layout. The animation lasts for 2 seconds and uses the custom hop ease we defined earlier, giving the transition a nice easing. We also introduce a negative stagger of minus 0.03, which means the items start moving to their new positions almost simultaneously but with a slight overlap. To add a final touch, we use the on enter callback to make each item rotate 360 degrees clockwise as it moves into place, enhancing the dynamic feel of the animation. Finally, we toggle the flag to reflect that the layout has changed. To initialize everything, we call init gallery, which first creates the gallery items and then sets them up in the initial linear layout. This is where our entire animation sequence begins. With this, our animation is complete. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.